Um, the first part, we discussed the broad implications, the broad issues facing the industry, and maybe some of the <coughs> techniques or the strategies you might use. Um, what I'd like to do is talk about, um, for the Centre for Learning Innovation, exactly what is it? You've heard the name a few times. Let's, let, let's look under the cover a little bit. Um, and let's talk about you know, what might be the opportunities, both in terms of the technologies that we're producing and how you could use them, leverage them for your customers, um, how we can learn from working with you as members to um, address the problems that you're facing in the research. And then also to try and give you a, a, a view into what's coming down the road, both in terms of the in, uh, incremental research where the, the next generation, if you like, using the phrase that, uh, from earlier, or perhaps some of the more disruptive elements, some of the elements which might put your business models under pressure so that we can at least be able to forewarn you and you may be able to develop strategies and we can help you with that in terms of you can turning this threat into an opportunity. I mean, there was a comment earlier this morning about, you know, as a content vendor, what technologies might there be that allow me to maybe re um, re-monetize but also add value rather than just being washed away by a potential avalanche of, of free content. And that's one of the issues I'm going to come back to in, in the presentation and in, in a later presentation. So I said, I, I'm Vinnie Wade. I'm Professor of Computer Science in, in Trinity College. Um, and I'm the director, academic director for the, the Centre for Learning Innovation. Um, background, I have about 20 years research experience in the area of e-learning. Um, particular focus is on personalization, but it's, it's much broader than that. And for 10 years, I also, in my spare time, ran the e-learning service for Trinity College Dublin. 17,000 students, um, undergraduate and postgraduate. And we went from a small number, less than five, online courses uh, when I started to over 60% of the courses had online elements, and we've now raised that to 80. So, I come from a background of trying to do the research, but also really try and get it out there and get it used and understanding the difficulties in that transition. So the mission of the centre is to examine, create breakthrough research for learning innovation. And breakthrough research can be in the form of um, today's technology that you might be familiar with, social media, um, some of the collaborative tools, the mobile, mobile phone, uh, smartphones, iPads and so forth. But there will also be things that maybe are a little bit further out, like the augmented reality, like the games, and how games really is beginning to be played within the learning sector, but how they're actually being used. And personalization, which is one of my areas of interest, where we actually are tuning the learning and tuning the experience without necessarily having to recode or rechange the technology. How do you actually do that? So these are the kind of things that the centre is concerned about, but it's looking on doing this with partnering industry. So we have the leading research groups in the, in the background technologies, but we have to partner with the industry partners to be able to understand that last mile, to be able to understand where, how to apply it, what are the innovations, and to work together with you to be able to then leverage that for your customers, for your organisations, for your revenue. It's unusual having an academic talking about industry and talking about uh, ra raising value for the industry. But that's what we're doing because I think academia has shifted a bit. We're no longer, we are definitely interested in the blue skies research. That's our, one of our focus. But we're actually trying to look at how can I get it all the way down to use. And that's, I think, the modern academic. If you talk to the top academics around the world, that they're now in, in the ICT spectrum looking at that whole span. And when it comes to that latter half, we have to do it with you. So our focus in the centre is on what we call the last mile. It's not yet another learning technology centre. I mean, we know there's lots of technology centres out there, learning technology centres in different countries, and what they, a lot of times what happens is they do these boutique type, really nice, well-guarded, uh, small implementations, um, tested with a small number of users, independent of perhaps industry, independent of real user bases, um, and it's really difficult for them to ever get make the impact. So, what we're actually doing is we're focusing on the application and the transfer of breakthrough technology 
into measurable learning innovation. And we're trying to create a dynamic hub for industry and research partners to design, apply, innovate, trial, and showcase. And we're trying to be a value add for your organization, whether as a customer of, of, of e-learning technology, whether a customer of um, the social media or the, or the related games technologies, or as a vendor of technology within the space. We're trying to be able to provide advice, be able to show uh, where the technology is going, be able to uh, apply and lower the risk of technology adoption. So if you think about it, the only way this will work is, first and foremost, you have to have real research experience and excellence. Um, and Sometimes, uh, Brendan mentioned today in Ireland, maybe we look inward sometimes and we can think of ourselves as being uh, greater or bigger than we really are. But as someone who's been spending a lot of time in research in the US and in Europe, I actually see some of the huge uniqueness we have. And the huge uniqueness we have is we're actually more collaborative than an awful lot of other countries. In the US, for example, a lot of times the university will have a number of companies that they work with, but they don't necessarily work a lot with other universities. <coughs> except where that research is just between the universities. Um, if you look at, at Europe, we, they don't have the same concentration of collaborative and complementary skills, all in a small area. And Ireland is a small area. We also have a vibrant uh, vertical sector in this area. Um, and we know and connect to the individuals involved in that. So actually we have, if, if you like, a Petri dish perfectly designed for generating new technologies and for looking at how they can really apply. The deep understanding of the learning sector. This doesn't work if our researchers don't understand learning. We've all been there. We've all sat at a presentation where someone says, this is a great technology and it'll be great for learning. Um, a, a, a very, very, very distinguished academic um, was doing a presentation on a conf at a conference there, um, a, a big e-learning conference about, about seven years ago. And she was an expert in search. And uh, she was basically discussing her search research and her application area was discovery-based learning. Um, and at the end of the talk, you know, a very good technical talk, I remember asking the question, I can see the discovery, but where is the learning? And she goes, yeah, that's actually true. You know, the problem was she had worked on the, the technology for the search, but had left all the cognitive effort on the learner to decide that was that information appropriate, how to best apply it, all of that other part that we know really matters. So in, our, in the centre, we have deep experience in the learning sector. That's both from our academic partners as well as our industry partners. And we've proven track record in plans for, for success. So all of the research... Appli um, partners within the centre have already commercialised and have commercialisation experience. The reason being is therefore that we can actually understand some of the requirements. If I take the, the first example is academic time runs about four times slower than industry time if you believe the industry. Um, you know, if we have a project we talk about two years. They talk about eight quarters. Um, so what the centre is trying to do is be able to balance those difference. For the research, you do have to have the longer view, but for the actual impact and innovation, you've got to also have the short view. How you actually marry those things together. The centre has strong industry direction because we won't work on something unless the industry actually has a need for it. Now, sometimes we have to work with the industry to, for them to discover that need, but, some to, but the key part is that is actually done from an industry-facing perspective. And the last part is, we really need to look at how we lower the risk of the technology adoption. There are lots of technologies that could play really well in learning, but no one quite knows oh, how will that work and, and will, it, will the customers take it on. We've got to, in the centre, work out how we can help with that, whether it be by trials with your customers and the, and the technology, whether it be by open forums with uh, uh, consumers of technology. There's different approaches, um, and we have a number of different uh, suggestions. But again, we want to work with you to help that happen. 
if I take a look at some of the uh, research projects, Johnny briefly inter 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 um, introduced them, but I just thought I'd, I'd give a little bit more detail for you. The first one is CNGL, um, Centre for Next Generation Localisation. The name would give you the impression that it's just about localisation. It's actually not. It's actually far broader than that. It's about global intelligent content. It's all about how we can make content more discoverable, more reusable, more adaptable, um, and to generate or uh, re-monetize its value. And it looks at aspects to do with creation and curation, typical academic title. What that means is being able to extract the information out of content, no matter what language it's in. Discovery and search. Um, Translation and localization, you'd expect that. Personalization adaptation. How does we how do we actually go about recomposing the content for an individual at runtime? And that content may be yours, but it may also be other types of content that's available on the web. And uh, delivery and, uh, and, and interaction. How do you do those multimodal interfaces? You know, we, uh, Johnny mentioned about Siri. You know, in the centre, they've got the world's expert in dialogic interfaces, in speech interfaces. To be, actually, to be able to leverage that, tech, that, that expertise and then be able to, able to apply it within uh, the learning sector. So the centre itself has that research at the basic level or at the fundamental level. And the centre, the, the Centre for Learning Innovation, is looking to, to identify those parts which are amenable or are addressing an industry need and then be able to research how it could be applied within e-learning sectors for corporate learning, for schools learning, or for life sciences. And the investment there is, you know, CNGL, is, it, the figure is about 35, 40 million over the last five years that it's attracted. And that's not necessarily state funding. They go out and uh, get that funding from the European Commission, from other industry, and so forth. So again, it's, it's it's tapping into the ecosystem that is Ireland research. And Ireland research is very strong today. Second centre, uh, as, as an academic partner, is Clarity. Clarity is the centre for sensor web technologies. And sometimes, um, talking to e-learning, people think, well, how would that work for learning? You know? And really what it's about is being able to sense about people, sense about place, location aware, and we all know that, how that's important for learning. And sense about uh, multimedia and the particular aspect that we were that's currently uh, um, being just, uh, demonstrated out there is the work on social recommendation and this basically based on your interactions with and uh, looking for content what other people with similar to you might have uh, uh, recommended and to do that in ways which is much more targeted than traditionally available today third academic partner is uh, Derry in Galway. And, and they've been championing this notion of semantic web and particularly searching over the semantic web. A lot of their work is, is about how we can actually search across this open corpus of uh, linked data that more and more uh, is becoming available. And the fourth partner is TSSG. Um, TSSG have been championing the area of mobile technologies and mobile communications for, for nine on 15 years now. Uh, I was first worked with uh, Willie Donnelly, who's in, in, in one of the, the heads down there, um, 15 years ago, working with industry on making projects. Um, and there's a particular expertise in the area of service management and uh, service analytics data analytics. So what does that mean? Well, what the learning, not learning, Center for Learning Innovation, really, it's looking at the last mile, but we know the research that's available in Ireland. And what we're able to do is access that research, apply it for learning technology applications, for industry applications, for industry uh, questions, and to be able to then license it through the centre if that's what you want, or to test it out, or to evaluate it, or to bring your customers in to try it out to inform them about what's coming down the line. So again, we want to be a inclusive centre we want to work with you to be able to leverage these sort of innovations. How does that play with the picture that Johnny said? 
Johnny mentioned that the industry partners had to find these four areas, social and informal learning, mobile learning, immersive learning, and metrics and assessment. But when we put together the, the, the center, one of the things I was looking to do is looking at the complementary skills. And it became clear to me that actually, you know, even with those big centers, there are a number of other places where we need to bring in some people. And we brought in uh, education technologists from, from TCD under the crisis. We brought in psychologists from the psychology department within, um, uh, I should be specifically the applied psychology department uh, in Trinity. And we brought in Smart Lab, which are a, a, unit, a research unit in UCD, which really focusing on um, e-learning with virtual reality, which we saw as, a, as a, maybe a little further out there, but something which more and more we want to be able to test out for, uh, for the industry. So what we actually do have is a really strong center which can leverage these expertise. Now what that means is there are people in these centers who are sent, uh, learning innovation center employees. They're there to try and help the industry to develop these use cases that you're going to see in a, in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, and today we will test out the technology and see how does it work together. With Johnny presented the, the consortium, but as we said, this industry membership must grow. And there are hopefully people here from organizations saying, you know, I think our company would be really interested in this. We wanted to hear from you. I know Google said, not quite yet. We won't have a membership available yet, but we'd like to talk to you now. The sooner we can get, we can make this happen, the better. Um, and from an academic perspective, you know, it's very difficult from an industry to know where to go in Ireland for particular research expertise because there are now, there, there, there's quite a, a gamut. So what we're saying is the Learning Innovation Centre is a collaborative centre. So therefore, it's housed in Trinity, hosted in Trinity, you can come to our front door and we can help you. And we will source or look for the relevant expertise that you want, either within us or we'll be able to redirect and ensure that you get the uh, response you're looking for. We need to do that for the sector. And we need to do that for the sectors associated with the sector. And I mean there from the content publisher side, I mean the gaming side, and I mean the um, multimedia side. The issue then becomes, well, okay, that's all very good, but can you really help us with the last mile? Because, you know, I'm sure every company at some stage has, has worked with academia and found that, you know what, it was great, but you know, I thought we'd get so much closer to how it would really work. And in fact, I, I was left with lots of decisions and I, and I, was, I felt uncomfortable about it. But what we're trying to do within the center is really define usages that are futuristic, but make a lot of sense and answer key challenges for the industry. And they are defined by the industry themselves. What we're doing also is we're looking to provide authentic evaluations for our technology. That means we will put the effort into making the service available to your customers, if necessary, for trials. And run those trials, and evaluate them, and then come back and report on that. Um, and we see that as a key way of, of growing the impact of the centre. The research is collaborative. Um, the thing we say to our industry partners, the more you put in, the more you'll get out. There's no doubt about that. I've been involved in collaborative research for 20 years. I see it all the time. There's, there is the lurking and the stalking. That's fine, but that will only get you so far. Actually getting involved in the use case or getting involved in the scenario and then really seeing how the technology works um, can have massive impact and can actually either address a real concern in your company or can really enhance the value of something you already have. And the last part is simplified exploitation. I know a number of companies have had difficulties over the years um, in trying to license technology from the university. Um, within the center, what we have is, a, a, again, a one-door solution, where a one-stop solution, where the technology can be licensed from the, uh, the, the, the center itself. And we look after the back end in terms of where, what university the original idea came from or where the, the foreground uh, IP came from. And we will help with that. Because again, we, we want to re reduce the barriers of getting it out there to help you. So, what 
did we do? Well, the first year of the, of the centre, we, we weren't officially launched. We had a pre-year to try and test out some ideas that the industry part and uh, uh, challenges that the industry partner gave us, and work with them. And we focused in on in the first year on social and informal learning. Um, and in particular, we were looking at social discovery, which is not just using going up against Bing or, or Google, but saying, you know what, an awful lot of learning and quality of, of quality searching is where other people have found it and recommend it. And how can that actually be brought into a learning environment? And not necessarily a formal learning environment, an informal learning environment. How can we support collaboration in this? And John, Johnny mentioned the word gamification. I have to admit, I'm allergic to the word because the, the gaming communities hate it. Um, because really it's kind of dumbing down what they do. But they have really, really strong uh, expertise in how you can tune motivation. We've seen the birth of volunteerism and crowdsourcing and all those issues um, that have come forward uh, on, on the on web science today. Well, in this particular look, we're looking at how can we actually leverage that? What are the keys? And we, the keys are different at schools level, at corporate level, and at lifelong learning because the motivations, intrinsic and extrinsic, are different. So we've been looking at what can you do? What are the, what are the lessons learned? And the last aspect here is personalization. Personalization, most of you would, would know that if you put in a, if you two, if, if you um, put in a query in Google, and the person beside you put in the same query in Google, you'll both end up with different sets of answers. The results will be different. And it's because Google knows who you are. Okay? Um, knows your IP address, knows your location, knows the number of, uh, the, the last count it was about 57 different signals that are affecting their search and, and addresses. Now, that's the first step in, 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 in personalization, where you have this ability to enhance the query independent of what the user thinks that they want and to be able to improve it. Where personalization for the center is going is that's okay, but can you actually recompose the experience for an individual that's tailored to their task, to their context, to their prior knowledge, to their mood, to their time? And so the center has been looking at technologies which dynamically um, stitch that together. That content does not have to be totally well-managed, bespoke content. That content can be a combination of your corporate content uh, for learning, co uh, in knowledge documents in your organization, or third-party content available on the web. And where we're moving to is user-generated content. This is content that people are microblogging about and so forth to bring in that extra just freshness that's needed. And again, it, it affects motivation, that freshness. It, it, it makes it seem much more ac accurate. But of course, to put an answer to your question, it means that it adds value to the content you already have. Um, and in doing that, um, just in time, I mean, we've got to remember that on the web today, over 60% of the content is user-generated now. It's gone past the corporate uh, generation of content. So there's huge amounts of value out there that can be leveraged for somebody's <coughs> own need. Um, the last part, we want to evaluate in real third-party user trials. So we, 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 um, some of the things that, that, that uh, Linda and Paul are going to talk about, um, to trial things within organizations for corporate, to trial things within schools, with teachers as, an, as, as a stakeholder, and parents as stakeholders, and to trial things for lifelong learning. And if we look at the, the, the different aspects, what we find is that the, although the way we might skin the technology and the, the way we might offer the technology, actually in the back end, a lot of the same technologies can be used. So personalization, social search, recommendation, um, semantic search, uh, reflection, all of those type of services that we've de developed as, as, as components, we're actually applying in different ways um, to suit the different contexts. 
So in the first year, what we have, how we have certainly done some breakthroughs around the dynamic personalization of open content. So being able to leverage the open content, and the example I think the, the demonstration out there is using Khan Academy uh, content, content from H&H, &H, content from Intel, um, to support schools and school learning. And to, it, to do it in a safe way where the, the students are not going to go across content that they really want. But the kids themselves, you should have heard them yesterday when they were being interviewed, um, they were saying things like, you know, the, the content was more accurate than we got with Google. The content was, was focused on what I really needed to do, which was much better than if I went off to Google. And I'm not against Google, but, it's a, but that's the difference between doing something that's focused for learning and doing something that's just general purpose information retrieval. Um, they said they found they could do it quicker. It was more efficient. Um, Donald talked about content of chunks of five, five minutes. Actually, the chunking that we do is in the order of 30 seconds, but we piece it together in different ways. So you end up with a very valuable number of minutes, depending on what you're looking for, and the storyline around that. And the social recommendation is how we can actually uh, leverage that recommendation and do it in a way that encourages other people to recommend. So you end up with kids or adults um, actually trying to outdo each other in terms of what they're looking at and what they can say to their pals and what they and all of a sudden, you, you've, you've just turned up the heat hugely on the kind of learning you can do. Enhancing the, this uh, search over semantic information. We know, or you've probably heard the phrase, linked data. A lot of the content out there before was difficult to interpret, difficult to connect. The linking that has been, been done with the semantic web is beginning to make that happen. And the searching over that is currently um, what's demonstrated out there in under the, the um, semantic search. Dynamic feedback and analytics for the learning, because learning analytics has become, has become really key. I mean, I noticed in Donald's uh, new issue name, it's learning and performance, and the two have to go hand in hand. And from our perspective, this is also where the pedagogical aspects come in. Yes, it comes in in design, but it also in, uh, comes in in terms of being able to recognize what's going on and being able to then look, look and make educational uh, interventions if need be, or getting out of the way, as Donald said, if appropriate. And then looking at social and uh, reflective interaction. Again, key aspect is learning is a social thing. No one likes to feel totally isolated. There are times we want to learn alone because of course speed or efficiency or particular needs, but we have to always remember the social aspect. So I'm not going to take uh, Linda's thunder. Uh, when she's talking about the actual uh, systems themselves. But we've developed a, a number of systems. But the key point I wanted to say um, before is it's not just how we're presenting it on the screens and, and so forth. It's the technology that's decouplable and reusable from the back ends. So in here, you, there's personalization in terms of the uh, recomposition aspect. There's reflection. There's... Uh, social peer groups, there are um, recommendations and, and Twitter feeds um, there, and then there's an exam um, inter interesting about the ratings of the content that you have. So it's a whole dashboard, and that was being used by, that was a schools one for my case. That evaluation, again, I'll give uh, Linda will talk a little bit more about the evaluation there. But it did. I mean, we went into one of the harder places with schools. So we went into teaching algebra to first years. Not exactly the most edifying topic for some uh, first years. But actually, we found that their engagement was much higher. And in the corporate space, again, the look and feel might be different, but some of the services, again, the same technology behind it. Where are we going in the second year? Because the second year started for us already. Um, we're obviously looking at personalized mobile learning. Because when it's in your hand, it becomes more personal. So there's other things that we can actually do to that content to make it even more time-based or, or, or structured for you. And again, personalization has a direct impact on motivation. If you feel the system is really working for you, you begin to invest more in the system. That's proven. We've been using personality learning in Trinity for the last 10 years. I teach classes on final year engineers, final year computer scientists, 
computer science and language and uh, general uh, engineering students. They're all different backgrounds. They all have different, uh, if you like, trajectories, and they're all very focused on what they want to get done. But I've been able to use personalization across those large classes to be able to suit their needs, give them examples that make sense to them, and give them the motivation and give them the space. Because some of them are already been working in companies and already know everything about the particular topic. So personalization adapts to their prior knowledge and gives them challenge. Whereas others maybe have gaps, in which case personalization automatically adapts to those gaps and fills them. And coaching along the way. Learning content search, again, we're, we're looking at how we can actually mine or gather information from the content to be able to then inform um, for reuse. We're looking at games, and in particular, in the initial is a desk study. We have some prototypes in terms of games, and they're, out, they're outside, but uh, in terms of providing uh, some feedback back to the industry, back to, this is where it is, and these are the particular opportunities in the sectors, and then making a collective decision based on our industrial partnership on where we go down. Learning analytics, which is to do with content mining and to do with uh, actually analyzing who are the leaders in the social network. We're all talking about collaboration, but you actually, if you can spot the leaders early, you can enhance them. That's the equivalent of turning up the volume. Because if, if you can enhance them and support them, they will bring the class with them or your group with them. And they'll also create much more value within your um, network of, of, of uh, customers. And looking at augmented reality and learning and begin to experiment in terms of what are the things to avoid, what are the real problems, and what are the real wins. So the center is a unique focal point for translating groundbreaking research into learning innovation. Um, we're launched, we'd love to work with you by industry part memberships, by collaborations, by trials, by attending of events, by papers. A whole gambit of services the center will be offering over the next six months. Um, and from our perspective, we'd love to see you to take part. Thank you very much. <laughs>